break, break, deep worker sex, life support, deep worker sex, life support. It's often said that we know more about the moon or about Mars than we do about the deep sea. I am a bit nervous. Um, I actually, I, I scuba dived all the time until I became a mother and then I stopped because scuba diving becomes an extreme sport when you have children. Um, but for me, that my curiosity of the deep is just so strong that that's overriding uh, all those fears right now. I, I just feel like this is an amazing opportunity. That the council is made up primarily of representatives of all the commercial fishing groups, and they closed 16 different seamounts to commercial fishing. Find these areas of high abundance of corals, they are required to put in. But there continues to be bycatch of corals, which means they're not completely static. Expecting a lot of adventure. Discovery. We're going to get a lot of good work done. I'm really excited. I'm looking to get critical data to move the ball forward for marine conservation. I expect to be blown away by the beauty of the underwater world. we started to get really worried about the impact of the bottom trawl fishery in British Columbia. Uh, about two years ago we realized that uh, one of the key pieces to try and change things was doing more research and we realized we are going to have to do it ourselves. And now here we are at Queen Charlotte Sound. We did our first dive today, our first research dive. We went to 750 feet and we saw an amazing and incredible world down there. Descent from surface to bottom takes about 10 minutes. When we started this dive, we expected to see sponge when it landed on the bottom. Instead, we landed on silt. Upon reaching the bottom, we drop into a field of crinoids. But as we progress through the dive, this is a cloud sponge. And everywhere we found cloud sponge, we found associated organisms, such as rockfish, galatheid crabs, and uh, lithotid crops. As you move on, we find a different species of cloud sponge. But everywhere you found live, growing sponge, you found organisms all over it. Anywhere you find a sponge, you find a complex little community. Sponges form uh, an essential element of uh, habitat in the deep sea ecosystem. Average person thinks of corals, they think of reef forming shallow water tropical corals. What we're studying are deep water corals. These are out of sight, out of mind. Most people are not aware of them, but they serve about the same purpose as the coral reefs of the tropics. These primnoid corals that just came up uh, from a deep worker dive provide habitat for organisms uh, in the deeper water. These are colonies of animals, just like the shallow water reefs. They're colonies of animals that live together on a common skeleton. They also have stinging cells in their, in their tentacles. So these are octocorals. They have eight tentacles. And 
Those tentacles are laden with nematocysts, or stinging cells, which they use to capture zooplankton, but they also feed upon organic matter in the water column. The deep water corals differ from the shallow water corals in that they do not form reefs. However, they form dense um, assemblages. Deep water corals can form vast meadows, supplying habitat for lots of deep water organisms. Places for juvenile fishes to hide. There are also places for many organisms to feed. Uh, a lot of brittle stars crawl up on the deep water corals and filter feed or suspension feed, catching animals in the water column. Crabs do the same thing. They're not only hiding from predators, but they're using it as a place to feed. I've been studying bottom trawling and its impacts on marine life for something over 10 years at this point. Bottom trawling is a form of fishing whereby a huge net with a weighted bottom with these huge doors is pulled across the seafloor. As we drag these nets across the seafloor, it crushes everything in its pathway and it just, you know, the corals, the sponges, anything that sticks up above the seafloor just gets flattened as the trawl moves along the seafloor. The importance of this expedition is to find these sites where there's a lot of coral and sponge, especially the coral, because we've, in British Columbia, made some progress in protecting some of the sponges. But the coral sites have not been identified, and we need to protect those sites as well, because a lot of these areas on the seafloor are the homes for commercially important fish. They're sometimes the nurseries, they are also the places where these fish spawn, and typically there's a, there's a dynamic between, you know, where do they want to fish? They don't really want to fish right in the main coral, uh, where they would snag their nets on the coral, but they also want the fish that are associated with those areas. So we've been very concerned that trawling in general does a lot of damage to the seafloor as it moves across these habitats. We were able to go to one site in the mid Moresby Gully and dive on that site where there was notice that uh, indeed it is a heavily trawled ground. One of the, the scientists who was in the submarine at that time came back and said, well, it looks like the seafloor has been plowed right here. Now the work will be to go back and share this work with the managers um, and other people involved in conservation along the British Columbia coast and protect these sites from future impacts. In the submarine going to the bottom, I didn't really feel any fear. However, this was the first time I had been in a submarine by myself. As the submarine began to approach the bottom, what did I see? Brittle stars everywhere. The bottom was paved with thousands of brittle stars. And I began to think, gosh, echinoderms rule here. Some places, they were just wall to wall, not quite touching each other, but stretching as far as the eye could see. Some areas of the bottom appeared to be devoid of brittle stars. They may have been disturbed, perhaps by trawling. The deep worker submarines have manipulator arms, arms that allow us to collect specimens. This coral provided habitats for many different life forms, including brittle stars, shrimp, and other small organisms. The Gorgonian corals are actually colonies of animals. The individual members are polyps. The skeleton of the corals is flexible so that it can move in the currents. When you're diving in a submarine and seeing the spectacular ocean creatures at the bottom of the sea, you think you're in a world that's very isolated from everything else.
But as you come to the surface and then look out and see the mountains and the forests, you realize that it's all connected. It's all part of one ecosystem. The study area for the Finding Coral Expedition extends from the north end of Vancouver Island up to the Alaskan border. 50% of the fish that are caught in British Columbia either live or migrate through the region that we're doing our research in. The forest around us is the Great Bear Rainforest. 30% of it is protected and the rest is managed to a whole new standard and it's done to ensure that the forest will be here to support communities for years to come. The ocean around us is the Pacific North Coast Integrated Management Area, or PINSEMA, and none of it is protected. Some areas have a little bit of protection, but there's no areas that are completely protected. We're trying to learn more about the impacts of bottom trawling so that we can ensure that our oceans aren't threatened by this activity. But there's many other activities in this region that we're also worried about. Right now there's plans to open up the coast to oil tankers, provincial government is advocating for offshore oil and gas development, there's the constant threat from open net cage salmon farms. In short, there's many, many, many issues that we are wrestling with and that we need to find a better way to manage if we want to keep the ocean healthy. And this means we get the people that work and live in this region to sit down around a table and build a plan, a plan for our ocean, a plan that makes sure that the ocean is healthy now and for generations to come. So over the next 12 months, I will be traveling across the country, uh, sharing our footage and our pictures and our stories from, from the trip, uh, and try and introduce all Canadians to the wonders and the mysteries of the deep sea. So one of the things we want to do is we want to protect the areas of known corals with interim protection. We then want the government to complete the Pacific Region Coral and Sponge Conservation Strategy. And so we want to actually see it put in play through the fisheries management plans and through the Pensima marine planning process. So this is a request that we have into the minister right now, and it's one that you can join by going to our website, and you can, um, uh, there's an action alert there, and you can take action and fill out a letter, and you can put your own comments on it, and that goes to, to the minister and also to the uh, regional director general out here in, in British Columbia. One of the things that is so important for all Canadians to know is just how much the ocean supports them every single day. So protecting the ocean's ecosystem is really important if we want to protect all of us and continue to have the lifestyle that we've grown accustomed to. So we need to find a way to protect these deep sea coral ecosystems uh, to ensure that the ocean stays healthy.